He has been described as the doyen of rural development in the country and credited with the introduction of national service, as well as other programs that helped bridge the rural urban gap. And later today, the governing NPP will organize a lecture to celebrate the legacy of Ghana's Prime Minister in the Second Republic, Kofi Abrifa Buzia. As we build up to the event, my colleague Elton Brobe looks back on the life of the man. Buzia's entry to politics started in 1951, when he was elected by the Ashanti Confederacy to the Legislative Council in 1952 as leader of Ghana's Congress Party, which later merged with other opposition parties to form the United Party, he became the main opponent to First President Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. He fled the country when he felt his life was in danger, but will return later in March 1966 when Nkrumah was overthrown. Buzia formed the Progress Party when the ban on politics was lifted by the National Liberation Council. His party went on to win the parliamentary elections with 104 out of the 105 seats, making him the Prime Minister. Those who remember him, like former Ambassador Dr. Amonu, Professor Ofosu, and Chairman of the Council of Elders of the MPP, CK Tedem, says he was the best that ever happened to Ghana. His leadership in Ghana was morally and politically compelling, and his government was a model. By our standards, it was a model respected all over the world. That was the only regime and period in the history of this country until the Kufo regime that there had not been any political deten uh, detainees or prisoners. Even the so-called uh, big men like Kwame Nkrumah, Godima, Kodjobosio, they all sit quiet. If you drop a pin, cling, everybody will hear. Because they all want to hear what he had. These Former President John Adjokun Kufo was given a taste of public life in 1969 when at age 31 he was made Deputy Foreign Minister by Dr. Buzia. According to him, his success in politics could be attributed to him. He was such a, a rare uh, personality in the then Gold Coast. And all school children who aspired to be um, scholars and things like that dreamt of becoming uh, a Buzia in the future. In fact, I, I was one of them. There was something very cool about him in spite of the crowd and the jostling and pushing. Very cool and he spoke so softly. Uh, so that was my first impressions of him and of course uh, since then even then, at that age, I thought that was the man. But Takofi Abrifabuzia faced economic and social challenges during his two-year rule. Issues about negotiation with the IMF for the city devaluation, the implementation of the Aliens Compliance Order, and others led to his overthrow. Whilst he was in Britain for a medical checkup, the army under Colonel Ignatius Kutue Champon overthrew his government on 13 January 1972. Buzia remained in exile in England and returned to the Oxford University where he died from heart attack in August 1978. He left behind eight children. One of them, Yabuzia, said Dr. Buzia, was a family man who was inspired by the African values. Everything he wrote was from home, but put in a way that those people overseas would respect it and respect us and respect our wisdom. He's talking about family and how people treat each other not just great people and not just great things but ordinary things brother and brother sister and sister husband and wife Alton Brobe for Joy News well this afternoon's lecture will be chaired by former president John Kufo with president Kufado delivering the keynote address